These are pretty simple. All I'm gonna be using is a knife like this and some scrap pieces of foam. This is pink XPS foam. It also comes in green and blue. Go to your local hardware store. You should be able to find it. If you can't find it, there are some people that sell it on Amazon. You don't have to use this foam. You can also just use whatever scrap foam you have sitting around. I buy this stuff regularly and I have a train building business and I really accumulate a lot of scrap to the point that I have to throw it away. So a few of my builds are mainly to get rid of some of that scrap and this is one of those builds. Alrighty, I'm gonna start off with a new blade. Now, because I sell these regularly, I have to make a pretty uniform size. So I have cut out the base of all these. Um, I sell a set of three. So we're doing a large, medium, and small. So throughout this video, I'm gonna be working on the larger size, but you wanna stay tuned so you can see the glamour shots as I'll be showing all three together in those glamour shots. So the first thing we wanna do is just chisel up this base. So it looks like rock. It's pretty easy to do with a knife. All right, like so. And you'll see it's really sticking to my hand, all that static. So a cheap method to prevent some static is just to spray with a light mist of a spray bottle. It's really light like that. And then it's not gonna stick all over your hand. Just keep it very lightly wet, whatever you're working on, very lightly. You don't want to make a mess, of course, but it's going to help keep this little stuff from sticking to your hand. Okay, right now I'm just mapping out how I want to do it. Um, looks like that's pretty good. One of those there. We're going to carve these up just like we did that. So I got all these shaped up the way I want them. So the next step is just gluing them to the base. So I got some hot glue on there. My hot glue is a little bit tinted from the lava pools that I made recently. I did a video on that. I have a pretty good method of making realistic looking lava. So definitely worth checking out. We're just gonna try to fit everything in there just right. Make it snug to the base. If you need to go in and go in and make them fit a little bit better, you can cut a little bit off and then make it fit a little bit better. There is our rock formation, so far at least. The next step, we're gonna take some little pieces of foam here off this strip. Say, I think five should be good enough for this one. Uh, you can either chip it up with your finger or cut it up with your knife. While well, making these little rocks that we're gonna stick on here just for a little bit more variety. And in some of these spaces, it's a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna add these rocks. I'm gonna just do all the glue all at once. And then hurry. And we got ourselves the basic shape of our foam. I'm taking this wadded up piece of aluminum foil and we're gonna add some texture to everything. I'm gonna both roll and add some indents with the end. I have this shaped like this, like a roller, both ends are textured a little bit different. I'll give lots of variety to this guy. Like that. Okay, now I don't do this step every single time, but sometimes I'll notice that they're just a little bit more wobbly than, than I like them. So I will go in 
the middle right here with some hot glue. Be very careful to make sure it goes all the way in there. You just pump a big few squirts in the middle of these of the hot glue. It should go right down in there. Also, if you get a glue gun like this and you're worried about not being able to get it just right, you do get this nozzle with it. And you'll see it's like a longer nozzle. And you'll be able to stick it way down in there and really glue it in there to good. So definitely recommend this glue gun. I'll have a link to it in the description. Very useful interchangeable heads. There's a bunch that come with it. So it's well worth the money. Today I'm just taking my chances and Squirting it on down there. All right, and there's that. The glue down there is gonna take a few minutes to dry most likely because it's all trapped in there and hot and it might even melt a little bit in there, which is okay. Cause then the glue is gonna melt into the foam and really stick things together. All right, the next step is going to be adding a little bit of sand to our pieces. This is slightly watered down PVA glue and a brush. And I'm just going to add this along the base. You can add it more than just the base, but for this listing, I have it just added around the base of the rock formations to hide some of the cracks and add our sand. Pretty straightforward step. Shake it off and that's what we are left with. So to paint this black, I'm just gonna be using black house paint, which is what I usually use. And the big thing about these ones is often hard to get inside those inner areas. So I use a long skinny brush it's going to be hard to get in there with a big brush, so I definitely recommend finding yourself just a cheap, something small and cheap to get inside there. So that guy's painted black. I'm going to let it dry overnight because the inside of this Kind of has a hard time drying, so I'm going to stick it in front of the fan and let it dry. And then we'll get back to painting it tomorrow. Okay, so these are dry both on top and bottom. So, we're going to paint this guy up. First with some gray. This is pewter gray. But you can paint it with any color that you would like. Let's use this brush today. And as with most of my stuff, I'm just going to do a light layer, a light layer, but a heavy overbrush. And that's just loading a little bit of paint into my brush, not really wiping much off. And then hitting the piece with the brush. That way, some of this black is going to show in the crevices and add a more detailed look to the terrain. And I go more sideways on the bottom and on the top I'm going more up and down, mostly down. That way everything hits the way the light would hit and in the end that looks a lot better. Also with this step I like to go over any of these pieces of foam that are showing through. That way we don't have pink foam showing in the end. And that's what we got. All right, the next step is gonna be adding this burnt sienna color to our build. And this is moccasin brown, but it's really close to just a lighter version of a burnt sienna. In this layer, I'm just gonna be adding streaks, really, really light streaks of this color. So I'm gonna wipe a lot of it off, and then I'm just gonna add some streaks here. To our build, I'm having a hard time seeing, but 
I like to blend the outer layer of the streaks a little bit once some of the paint's off my brush. And you're left with something like that. And this is just to add some detail, something to look at if somebody wants to look at the piece of terrain. Um, also to make it look more natural so it's not just cold gray. But if you want to go scientifically, this would be oxidization. So you'd have like this rock face and perhaps this section right here has more iron content. It gets hit by water more. It's going to turn to orange color. So if you need a scientific explanation, really it's an artistic choice though. Now with our creamy highlight of antique white, we're going to do a quick dry brush over everything. With this stage, you want your brush. I'm using this cheap chip brush because I like how it just hits the top of everything. Um, you're going to use your brush. You're going to wipe off most of that paint. And then you're just going to hit it the same way we did the gray, but it's going to be a lighter coat. I like to do a more of a controlled dry brush and not dry brush consistently over the whole thing. So here I'm going over the top a lot more just because I know light's going to be hitting the top of these rock formations more than it is at the base. And we end up with something like that. We're going to spray varnish this baby and then we'll get into the screenshots. 